Good day, LA. I'm Zach Goldsmith. This is Ben Bellick. And we welcome you to another episode of To Live and Buy in Los Angeles. Today, we have an LA legend. Much like Chasen's, Jimmy's, <laughs> or Hamburger Hamlet, or even Michael Lebeau, Josh Flagg will always be a Beverly Hills estepo. He has sold some of the city's most legendary estates and has the longest run on a real estate TV show of anyone that has ever lived, period. Ladies and gentlemen, Million Dollar Listings own, Yoshua Josh Flagg, a.k.a. Esvehan. Thank you for the humble introduction. <laughs> Such a cute smile. Oh, I love oh, you. I give me cuteness I aggression sometimes. I don't know why I like you so much. Me or Ben? <laughs> Actually, both of you. But ben, too? Yeah, I like Ben. Why? He's a good boy. I think he's a nice guy. I am a nice guy. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> okay, anyway. Is that for you, like, the first time you've ever heard someone even say something nice about someone? Josh, uh, <laughs> Zach doesn't like it when anyone gives me a compliment, which he he's jealous. generally phony. For. I don't he like is. phony. Yeah. <laughs> um, Josh, you're OG Million Dollar Listing now in its 15th season. Are you going to do another one? I mean, if there is another, yeah, why not? I've been doing this for 18 years. Have you enjoyed the journey? Of course. I started when I was 21. I just turned 38. So I basically grew up on television. Literally. Actually, I don't even know if I've grown up yet. Oh, no. Absolutely. I definitely not. have not grown but up yet. But you do look like uh, homeless chic. You Thank look you. dapper. How do you, what do you glam yourself in the morning? How do you do this? I have a glam squad that comes every morning for the you, last 20 years. You do not have a glam squad. Well, it's not a glam squad. I mean, it's this guy, Mark <laughs> Wade. He's been doing my hair since I was 13. I'm you sorry. Have a guy. You've had someone doing your hair since you were 13. So you're like, okay, I've been bar mitzvahed. Right. I'm now a man. <laughs> right. Someone else will do my hair now every morning in perpetuity. Well, he's been doing my hair since I was 13, but he started doing it like regularly every day, probably when I started, maybe when I was 25, I want to say. Because that's when I changed my hair. Like it used to be spiky, that anyone could put gel and spike there, but that was the look at the time. And then I started doing kind of like a little bouffant thing. Like, well, I don't know how to blow dry my own hair and do the curling and all that shit. You, you do have my, a bouffant. It's just if you want to call it that, it's a bouffant. If you think about it, it's just, you know, high up and to the side. But I can't do that on my own. No. No nor would you want to. There was a time where you went through like a pretty public divorce. Mm-hmm. Do you like how do you navigate such intense public interest in your in your life? What do you mean? How do I navigate it? I, I presume it can't be easy. I mean, we had Mauricio on the show, and he said, you know, it, we we asked him like because they say like no publicity is bad publicity, and he no, was there's like, bad publicity. Okay. Well, there were a lot of negative things said about your divorce in the press, which I've spoken to you directly, and a lot of them seem untrue. You know. I don't, I don't think it was uh, like a secret or it was not obvious uh, that my marriage was unhealthy and was – it was not the right match. Mm -hmm. So it's not like a secret came out. I mean I, I divorced him. I left him. I couldn't take it anymore and, you know, ask me anything you want to know. I'll tell you. Did you sleeping with one of your castmates interfere with your marriage? Tracy? Yeah. It really <laughs> fucked up the marriage. Tracy? Yeah. It's not what Altman says. Was your feud with Josh Altman real? Was it on TV? Or was it real life? Oh, no. We didn't speak to each other for years. Mm. Mm -mm. Like, no, like, hated each other. How do you deal, navigate uh, in a town where top brokers are seeing each other all the time and you guys are shooting a show together? What? There's not brokers that you hate that you have to do deals with? It's easy. There you go. I mean, it's just like Sorry, a deal's a deal. Remember. It's different. I mean, you separate it. Everyone wants to get the deal done and make get their check. So you, you put your feelings aside. When I got in the business, when I was just about uh, when I was nineteen. So what am I now? Third. So nineteen years ago, I was a cocky, arrogant asshole. Nineteen years ago. Uh huh. And you've changed. Oh yeah. Oh. When I started, I was such an asshole. Like I would literally, I had my monogram license plate every broker would park on the street when they were going on caravan i would park and right in the middle of the driveway walk right in just everyone just could see me i thought i was the shit and i burned a lot of bridges and i was also very aggressive and i didn't really 
you know, understand like, you know, how it's important. Look, buyers you are young, come and go. You cocky, entitled punk. Excellent. And I still am, but, but to a different degree. But buyers come and go, but the brokers, they stay in the business and you have to keep those relationships. I didn't understand that. You know, I was just mm-hmm. first in the business and I just didn't understand that. And so, you know, I burned a lot of bridges. Whose and bridge did you burn? You name the person. So, well, let me ask you that because actually I wrote this down because I remember an open house that I came to very early into when I got into the business, like around 2011. And I think like a lot of real estate agents, their move is to be like a people pleaser. And I would I would have characterized you then as somewhat unapproachable. Do you Would you say that's the same? Wait, wait, now? I didn't hear. What, what was the first part? I didn't understand the first part, but going to an open house. I again? said I went to an open house that you were holding. Your oh, own oh listing, yeah, yeah. And I found you to be very unapproachable. I get that a lot. Do you think it's you're the same now? Do you yes. get it now? What, why do you? Because I'm you, insecure. Really? Yeah, 100%. So, so you think just publicly you're. No, no, I act that way because I'm insecure. It's funny. Like Candy Spelling is very similar. We were talking about this the other day. I said to her, I was having dinner with her, and I was like, you know what's so funny? We're like the friendliest people on earth, but everyone thinks we're raging assholes. And I said, why do you think that is? She goes, because we're both just very, sh- not shy. She's very shy. See, which you would never think. You would think like Candy Spelling, like built the biggest house in fucking America. How shy could this woman be, right? Mm-hmm. But internally, it's something obviously comes from childhood. I don't know what it is. I grew up in a loving family. My parents have been married for forty-two years. I, I comes. I guess it comes down to being picked on on the on the on the uh, recess yard or whatever. So it's like a self-defense mechanism. The guards Probably, up a little bit. But but honestly, it's it's not even. I'm not consciously doing it. I'm not sitting there being like, I'm going to be this way and I'm going to be aloof because mm-hmm. I want people to realize that I'm too good for them and and whatever. Mm-hmm. It's literally just a uh, like, oh, I'm afraid this person's not going to like me. So what can I do? I'll just, I'm going to remain guarded until I feel comfortable with the person. Mm -hmm. It's not conscious. No, I think I I created, uh, developed a sense of humor defending myself. That's how I would defend myself from embarrassment of any kind. That was my mechanism. Well, it's both, but the same thing. Like I'm unapproachable, I guess, at first, but I also, everyone knows I have a sense of humor too. And I think I use that sense of humor as a defense mechanism. I use both of them. It's a combination. But the minute I like, find you interesting or I find a rapport, it's a different person. But I don't consciously do it. It's like I watch, you know, um, like Lisa Vanderpump. I think probably people would agree that she's probably not approachable and she seems, you know, but over the years I've gotten to know her and I find her extremely, she's wickedly funny and I find her very approachable once you sit down with her. Like there's several people like that. Candy Spelling, like, you know, uh, Maybe Kathy Hilda. I think she doesn't strike me as approachable when you first hear her, but I've known Kathy for 20 years, and I she cracks me up. I think she's one of the funniest people I've ever met in my life. She's wild. That's she's another good wild. example. Good my mom exa- does that, too. People think she's very stern and scary, this imposing old British figure. Yeah. And she's lovely. You yeah. Know, very sweet. But so. let me ask you, so, like, what do you remember which open house it was or where it was? Or? I do. It was, um, there's a couple houses in WeHo West where they're, like, technically condos where there's, like, two houses on each lot. And it was it was one of those. I and so did you just come in and I it was didn't on, I think get it was off on the West couch? Or, or West Mount. No, you were just kind of, like, buried in your phone, but, like, intentionally in a way where, like, you just really didn't want to be bothered. But, Josh, you just literally compared yourself to three significantly older women than you and a lot of real estate agents they farm a neighborhood they farm a community is your farm older women that's his best friend squad it's not my farm it's who i relate to okay ever since i was a child like my best friend was my grandmother as Mm -hmm. a child like most kids wanted to go to like a laker game or chuck e cheese or a pizza whatever i wanted to go to hillcrest with my grandmother (laughs) or the bel air hotel or you know sit and go to the george sank like like i always had an obsession with older powerful women and Mm -hmm. that's why like when my grandmother died you know that was a huge void in my life because Although my parents are phenomenal, they're in love with each other and they like to do their own thing. My grandmother was my best friend. We mm-hmm. would travel around the world together. I could say, uh, "Grandma, I'm I'm depressed. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go to Paris for the weekend. Let's go." Like she was that, and that's why I kind of I developed this relationship with Candy, where she is like she kind of replaced my grandmother. And I don't mean that in an older sense, but that figure where she's just like Candy's single now. Aaron has been dead for. Well, I don't know. Aaron Spelling's been dead since 2006. Yeah. And she had a void in her life, too. And she found someone that's like her travel partner. And we go on trips together. We split everything 50 50. She's like my best friend. And, you know, we're just like, we go on. She's, she's like a, she's, she replaced my grandmother in that sense that she was, you know, 
a, a bon vivant and ready to live life in her older years and ready to go. Let me ask, was Freddie Eklund successful in his attempt to gain market share in Los Angeles? Clearly not. We ran him out of town. Why do you think Go a, ahead, a real estate agent, even one with his preeminence in a market like New York? Because he acted like I did when I was 18 years old and I got into the business. Mm-hmm. That's exactly why. Why does that work in New York, but it doesn't work in L.A.? It wouldn't have worked in New York. I don't know what he was like when he was climbing the ladder in New York. Probably he was more humble, but then he reached a certain level of success and he mm-hmm. thought, oh, okay, I'm this successful. I can bring that wherever I want. It doesn't work that way. You can't come into town and act like an asshole and not have the repercussions. By the way, it took me a long time to repair my 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 uh, reputation. Mm-hmm. I had a very bad reputation from 18 until, I don't know, 25, 26. I was this arrogant punk like real estate agent. None of the brokers wanted to work with me. I still was very successful because I had good contacts and I was a great broker and I knew my shit. But, I mean, it really took a while for other brokers who I think now I have a pretty good reputation. I wouldn't say it's like, oh my God, he's the nicest guy on earth, but he's a solid guy. He's straightforward. He's, you know, I'm who I, who I am. They respect you because you are unapologetically you. I think that's the majority of brokers respect you, whether they like you or not is a different they story. They might not admit it, but I think you're probably right. We've had people say this right now. The perception is that million dollar listing flashing huge commissions for years huge on the screen in return for little work seemingly is the reason realtors are getting sued is the reason why the end of the buyer's broker could be upon us do you agree i would like to think that our show has that much impact and it probably does if you think about it ours was the first show to ever we really were the first show to show high high high-end houses and show you know, mega bucks and and big commissions earned and things that was that was ever done before our show. That was the first, and that was in two thousand and four, two thousand and five, right? So, do you so. think that has played a ha- large part in changing the game? I hate to take responsibility for bad things, but you know, the fact that I can take responsibility for for anything, it's, I'm proud of that. Yeah, you, I, I, yeah, probably. If you watch last season and you're going to watch this season, I mean. The theme is down market. Mm -hmm. I think we've covered, look, this is my second cycle on television, like up, down, up, down. We Mm. covered it in 2008. We covered it Mm. in 2000, uh, what is it, 2022 or whatever it is. We've covered both cycles. We don't, the show, this, one thing I'll say about our show, which I really, really am proud of, is that we don't, and I'm just saying this, like, There's no real bullshit on my show. Like, my show really covers it as it is. We don't fake houses. You know, we don't fake closings. We don't fake commissions. We don't Mm -hmm. fake sales. We don't fake anything. If the market's up, we go with it. If the market's down, we go with it. And even if I don't appreciate it or like it and I say to my cast members, guys, stop, you know, talking about how the market's down. This is going to influence people. It is the reality, and and, and we do it, and, and we cover it. Pricing in LA is nuanced because we've got a mountain range running through it. And, you know, for Frederick to come in, just not to belabor this because this isn't about him, but like him coming in oh, and that's having fine. trouble. I hate that piece of shit. It's hard. <laughs> it's hard. Do you know what that motherfucker price. did to me? Mm. No. Oh, this is great. So I was working at another company, okay? I was coming to Douglas Elliman and it was not announced publicly. It was very quiet. We'd signed the papers. They were sitting at Douglas Elliman. Um, not Viacom, what's their parent? Uh, Vector, Vector owns uh, Douglas Elman. They were at the Vector offices. He really jeopardized uh, the deal because he came out and leaked it to the real deal that I was moving from one company to the other. The company I was at before had no idea that I was moving. The company before called me up. It was a, it was a Friday, and it leaked into the real deal. And we, Douglas Elliman and I had this great announcement to come the, uh, to announce that I was coming to the company. We planned this crazy video. It was like we were spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on this amazing, crazy, like elaborate production that was going to go viral. He leaks it on a Friday, which could have really screwed up the deal. It leaks it on a Friday, and of course, I'm sitting. I, I'll never forget this. I was sitting actually. On, I was sitting on a private plane with with Josh Altman. We were flying to um, Aspen. And Josh goes, you want to see something? I go, what? He shows me the article. I'm like, oh, fuck. 
we found out. I called up the real deal and I did some due diligence. We found out that Frederick leaked it. Mm. And um, yeah, that was the end of our relationship. He literally, just to get his name in the article, and you know how we figured it out? It goes, Josh Flagg joins Douglas Elliman alongside Frederick Eklund. It had no mention of Tracy, Mm -hmm. no mention of Josh Elliman. I mean, how stupid do you have to be Mm -hmm. to do that? Like, it was so obvious. We did our due diligence. Great publicity for him. Like, what? It was a smart move. Ruin the fact that I'm coming to your company just so you could have your name in another article? What is wrong with you? Mm. Why do you think people are leaving Los Angeles? What do you mean? Well, you've been here a long time. A lot of people are, have been departing over the last couple of years. Departing California. Taxes? Just think it's taxes? Why else would you leave this beautiful, golden, sunny state? <laughs> to I go mean, to fucking Nevada? Does that sound fun to you? People are going to Nevada, Texas, Florida Let's for see, tax Beverly reasons. Beverly Hills or Las Vegas. You tell me. What sounds more appealing to you? Uh, that's why I'm here. Have you seen a major change in the city over the last 30 years? They said there was going to be an exodus out of the city. Not even close. But do you think that L.A. living here as a resident who's not leaving, as he and I, we're not leaving, what do you think has changed in the time since, let's say, you had just first gotten into our business? Oh, it's a different city in the sense that, I mean, security, homelessness, uh, ULA, this new thing. What now? You can't even build a house in Beverly Hills because they've down. I mean, there's tons of reasons, I, and they're terrible things. But I'm not leaving to go to Nevada just to save thirty percent. You must be out of your fucking mind. <laughs> why? Crazy? Why? What do you love so much about this town? I'm a fourth generation Los Angelino. My child will be a fifth generation Los Angeles. I'm not leaving the city. My great grandfather was one of the founding members of the Jewish community in Los Angeles. I'm not leaving. You love this place. Yeah, I, I bet do. you never go to the beach. Not here anyway. Actually, uh, no, you're right. Um, just finishing on the city, what do you think we need to bring the city back to greatness? Rick Russo. What, you think he'll run again? No, you just asked me a question. No, I was just curious <laughs> if you thought so. <laughs> just asking a follow-up. No, the guy he may run for president. I hope he does. He's one of my very good friends. I love him. I think he's amazing. I was on his steering committee. I wish he would have won. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying that, that our mirror is not fantastic as it is, but I would have loved if Rick would have won. Mm-hmm. Last, uh, answer these questions as quickly as possible. One word or less. How do you get less? How do you get less word? than one word? That's what he was going to ask. Uh, oh, grunt. Like, uh, yeah, like, eh. Meh. Eh. 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 Last meal. Uh, I know it would be somewhere in this city. Uh, What's your last meal? Polo Lounge. That's two words. Uh, it can be in a... <laughs> Make it one. Plounge. We know what you're talking about. <laughs> no, seriously, where is the last meal for you? Polio Lounge. Okay. Polo Lounge. Yeah. Favorite film of all time? Clockwork Orange. Ooh, good choice. Favorite TV show? Golden Girls or Columbo. Love Golden Girls. What about book? We could skip that if you like. Yeah, I never read a book. Favorite, <laughs> favorite artist, favorite musical artist of all time. Oh, um, musical artist? Oh, I would go. Um, well, they're all. I was going to say anything Leonard Bernstein or or Harry Mancini or Henry Mancini or uh, Leonard Bernstein. Yeah, anything Henry Mancini. But th- that's not the if artist. You want to check just my wrote answer? Score. I wrote ahead of time. It was said Leonard Bernstein. No, I know anything it. Henry Mancini. But he's not the artist. He's just the writer. I feel like you wanted to answer another medium of art, though. Favorite artist. Yes, you're right. I thought you were. Gonna, I was going to say Matisse. Okay. Mm, okay. Or Fav- Leger. Favorite sport. I'm kidding. Golf. <laughs> Really? What do you mean? You don't watch golf, and you don't play oh, watch? golf. Watch. Well, I play golf, and I and I'm at golf and skiing. Skiing is fair enough. Skiing. What's uh, your lock screen right now? Uh, my parents. What keeps you up at night? Um, don't say it. It was I was leading you. you. I know answer. what keeps you up. What do you think? Mm, the male penis. Oh yeah, <laughs> I love the male penis. Yeah. Uh, but what? aside from your head, what keeps you up at night? Um. <laughs> Uh, I'll tell you what keeps me up at night. Becoming, um, so when I started the business, I started, for, I started, I worked for a guy named Bruce Nelson. And you guys probably don't even know who this is, but Bruce Nelson, at the in the time, there was Bruce Nelson, June Scott, a guy named uh, Nicholas Camilleri. These were the big, big brokers of the, Ronda Salvo. Mm-hmm. These were the huge brokers at the time. Soul. God rest his soul. He was a great guy. When Bruce died, I think 
actually, I don't even know if he's died yet, but well, I guess that's the point. People don't even, nobody remembers whatever happened to Bruce. I always think to myself, okay, I'm at the top of my game right now. I don't want to die like Bruce Nelson. You know, nobody remembers who he was. There was Victoria Lockwood. There's another example. She was the queen of Beverly Hills, right? Who the fuck is Victoria Lockwood? Who the fuck is Bruce Nelson? Who are these people? That's what I think about Keeps you up at night is, will they remember who Josh Flagg was? Yeah, or when I get to a certain age, will I be retired out? What is... This is going to be a good one for him because we had Mauricio on. I asked him what his morning routine was. I get up at 4.30. I take the dog for a five-mile hike. I drink a shake. I go to the gym. What does your morning look like? Nothing like that. I know. What uh, do you mean? Someone comes over to style his hair. Yeah, but I he's got to wake him nine. up. He's got to wake him up. Have you ever seen Josh, them? it's 11. Let's let him answer. Uh, my housekeeper wakes me up, comes in, gives me my pills. Put some in my mouth with a Capri Sun, by the way. I love Capri Suns. Oh, that's yes. With a little straw, my Capri Sun. Snooze in for another half an hour. Go to my bathroom. Guy cuts my, does my hair, whatever. Come downstairs, sit in my office. Uh, gets emails, calls, whatever done. My assistant comes in. We do, we roll more calls together, whatever. And then by 11, 30, 11, whatever, Listing appointment, listing appointment, listing appointment, whatever, whatever, whatever. Guys, thank you for tuning in to another action-packed episode with none other than Josh Flagg. Josh, where, if they literally are not on the planet, how would they find you if they couldn't find you? Just go to Josh Flagg1 on Instagram. I would love Josh Flagg, but that motherfucker in Tennessee who has... <laughs> My fucking Instagram. Yeah, we're speaking to your ass, Josh Flag. Literally, I will pay you to give me that fucking name. Literally, you if heard you're it listening first. to this. How much? Make him an offer. I, honestly, I, I will give you. I'll give you. I'll give you fifty grand right now. Just fifty give me my grand. Name I'm, fifty. I'm gonna edit that part. I'm gonna <laughs> offer five. And you're take the other forty five. Never mind. <laughs> Guys, we appreciate you watching live from Beverly Hills, and from those of you watching from all around the world. Josh Flagg. Thank you. You've been something. I'm at Ben Bellack, seated next to at Zach Goldsmith 24. And by the way, aren't you happy your last name is not Bacall? You know what's crazy is how many people will be like, oh, yeah, I know. We met. I'm like, mm, we no, didn't. we never met. We did not. As we always, we want to hear what you have to say if you like Josh <laughs> or you love him. Because there's no other way. Uh, comment. Tell us what you think, what we can add, and what Ben uh, can wear differently. <laughs> we love you. Let us fam.